How's it going guys? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to go over the process of me making my assembly table slash outfeed table for my table saw. It's basically a centralized workstation. I do pretty much everything right here. I don't have a very big shop and I wanted to make it as efficient as possible. I teamed up with Rockler and they provided me with all this T-Track and accessories, which are awesome and I appreciate it. And also teamed up with AccuRide and they provided the slides for the drawers and those are really nice as well. And I'll show you guys that in the video. So if you guys want to stick around, I'll show you how I did it. This is kind of a big project and I just wanted to do it a piece at a time. So I started out with the top. I went and got two three quarter inch sheets of plywood and one three quarter inch sheet of MDF. I wanted the top to be kind of thick, so I figured laminating three sheets together would be the way to go. I had them cut down the sheets to manageable size at the store, close enough to where I could trim them down with my track saw to the exact size I wanted, which in my case was six foot by four foot. I should mention I only trimmed out one to the final size, and then as I laminated them together, I used a flush trim bit, which you'll see here in a minute, to make them all exactly the same size. To laminate them, I just spread an even coat of type on two all over the face of the first sheet. Once I had the top piece on evenly and clamped down, I started putting screws in. I actually made a graph on here, but I went a little overboard with the screws. You definitely probably don't need as many as I put in there, but they act as clamps and I figured, why not? So here's the flush trim bit I was talking about. Basically, it's just a router bit that's straight and has a bearing on the bottom and it'll follow the bottom board and trim the top to the same size so you have a perfect edge. It's a lot easier than trying to cut them both the same size and then put them together. Here I'm just doing the MDF the same way and I won't make you guys watch all that. That guy on the left is Oscar, my buddy from Naughty Dog Woodshop. He offered to help me out on this build so I figured I'd take him up on it. He's really good at cabinetry and planning things out and he makes some amazing stuff. He actually has a YouTube channel as well, and I will leave that in the description below for you guys to check out. We had a lot of sheets of plywood to break down. I think I took about five down there, and using the track saw to actually get stuff rough cut was a really big help. Once it was all rough cut, we labeled everything, panels, doors, drawers, dividers, all that good stuff. What you're seeing here is the MFT by Festool. It's a pretty cool track saw kind of workstation. It has the track that flips down and a fence on the back so you can really start squaring everything up. This is where we made most of the final cuts for the panels and dividers and such. I use the table saw to rip down pieces which are called nailers and are used to attach the cabinets together. Oscar has a domino joiner and I really wanted to try it out so I figured I'd use it on one cabinet. And now I really want one. So maybe that'll be my next purchase. But for all the rest of the joinery, we use pocket holes. And this Foreman by Craig made it way easier. I have this standard jig, which you'll see later in the video. And I kind of got spoiled with this thing. So I think from now on, I'm just going to go down there and build all my projects. That way I don't have to buy a bunch of tools. Just kidding. This thing is definitely on my list. Once that was done, I started routing out the grooves in the top for all the T-Track using a three quarter inch bit provided by Tools Today. It's an Amana bit and it really worked well. I took two passes on each channel, the first pass being at a quarter inch and the second pass being just a little bit more than three eighths of an inch. The T-Track itself is three eighths inch tall and I wanted it to be recessed just a little bit. While I'm finishing this up, I just want to let you guys know that I will leave links to all the tools and everything I use in this video in the description below if you guys wanted to check that out. Back at home, I could get all the pieces out and in order and start assembling the cabinets. These clamp-on corner squares from FastCap are actually some Oscar designed himself as well. They're actually called Oscar squares. Basically, you just use spring clamps and clamp them in the corners and it squares everything up for you while you get your other clamps on. So I apologize, you're gonna see a lot of pocket screws being put in. I think I used around 600 of them on this project. It was just the cheapest, easiest way to do joinery on this. And for cabinetry, it's actually pretty popular. 
These are the nailers I was talking about that you'll use to attach your cabinets together. Once they're secured on the side with pocket screws, I went ahead and put some regular screws up through the bottom and through the top with a countersink bit, just to make sure it was all connected together and secure. So the first cabinet you saw me put together will be holding four big drawers and then this is actually going to be a cabinet with two doors and that will house my dust collection. By dust collection I mean a shop vac with a dust separator. I definitely do want to set up my bigger dust collector but I have no room right now so I need to build a shed outside and that's a later date project. Here you can kind of see a little bit better how those squares work. This is that one cabinet we did the dominoes on. I threw in some pocket screws as well, just so I didn't have to clamp it while the glue dried. This is the first of three sequential cabinets that will be put together and hold my sustainers and they'll have pullouts in them as well. So I have two bays for sustainers and then a smaller section on the end with a pullout for smaller stuff like sandpaper, spray paint, things like that. After I got all the cabinets assembled, it was time to make the drawers. I started rough cutting everything with my track saw for the drawers and then took the piece to the table saw to cut to the final size. Once I had all my pieces cut to size, I took out my standard blade and put in my dado set. The size of the material I'm going to use for my drawer bottoms is a half inch, so I just put in the appropriate amount of blades to make that size cut. If you don't have a dado set, this could also be done with a router. Once I had it in there, I set the depth to about halfway through the material thickness, and I started making cuts on all the drawer sides and the drawer backs. There's a ton of different ways to make drawers, this is just the way that I do it, but do whichever is comfortable for you. Once I had everything cut, I lined up the dados, clamped it together with a little bit of glue, and then I used pocket screws again to secure everything together. I used the same process on all four drawers. And the bottom slides right in, and all you gotta do is secure the front. And then it was time to install the slides. These are the slides from AccuRide. They actually have a 200 pound weight capacity, so I can load these things up and not have to worry about it at all. I used a scrap piece of plywood to create a spacer, that way I knew my slides were exactly the same height from the bottom on each side. You can see here I had to actually make a shim because I ended up making my drawers a little bit too narrow. The good thing is you'll never really see it because the false front of the drawer will cover it up. Once the slides were attached to the cabinet casing, you can then put the drawers in and start attaching the slides to the drawers. You can pull them out all the way and that way you can get to all the screw holes to attach the slides completely to the drawer. With any drawer slide it's going to be a little bit hard to put the drawer back in the first time but just kind of force it back until it clicks and then you should be free sliding. I really like the soft close on these slides. Then I can move on to making the drawer fronts. I have them all cut here and I'm just running a chamfer around the edge to give it a little bit of detail. Once that was all done, I could attach them to the drawers and I did that with spring clamps just to line it up and then just put screws in through the back. Then moving back to the other cabinets, I cut panels to fit in each bay and glued and brad nailed them into the nailers. Sorry there's no sound here, technical difficulties, the battery in my mic died. So these are the pullouts for the sustainers, I just used bottom mount slides for these, there won't be a ton of weight on them, and these are a little bit easier to install for this application.
After that was all done, I can move on to the doors for the dust collection cabinet. So I've never used pocket hinges before, so I figured I'd pick up a jig so I could do it the right way. This one by Craig works really well, kind of does everything in one step. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just thought it was a cool tool that I wanted to show you guys. So basically it drills the big hole for the hinge to set in, and then these small holes are pilot holes for the screws, as you'll see here. For the other part, I used the template that came with the hinge to mark the holes and then drilled pilot holes and installed that hardware. These are super cool hinges because they just snap on and off, it makes it really easy to take your doors off whenever you need to. So instead of putting an integrated toe kick into the cabinets, I decided to make a base that was about three inches inset from the cabinets and set everything on that. Rockler also provided these leveling feet and they came in really handy because my floor is far from level. Super simple to install. They have a lip on the bottom that just hooks underneath. Put in the four screws and you're done. I also put in some top support so I'd have something to screw the cabinets to. Then I turned my attention back to the top and started laying in all the T-track. Off camera I already pre-cut everything to fit and now I just need to get it all put in. So Rockler offers this T-track in all kinds of different lengths and they also offer these intersections. They come in four pieces and they just slide right in. It's a lot easier than trying to cut them yourself. The spots I'm leaving in the end right there so I can slide the clamps in. So I'm just test fitting all the T-Track to make sure it all fits. Once it did, I pulled it all back out and then I ran a small round over on all the edges. I didn't want any sharp edges sticking up for anything to get caught on or chip up the MDF or anything like that. So this really helped out. Once I was done with that, I could install all the T-Track and I used this self-centering bit which really helped get all the holes in the right spot. Like I said before guys, I'll leave all the links to everything I use in this video in the description. Here you can really see where those leveling feet came into play. This top is anything but light and I barely got it up there by myself. Probably not the best idea, but when you work alone, you just gotta figure out ways around it. When I got it spaced out just the way I wanted it, I secured it to the cap. I even got it level on the first try. That usually doesn't happen. Once that was done, I could reinstall the drawers and the doors for the cabinet and all the pullouts for the sustainers as well. I figured I'm gonna have this workbench for a long time, so I wanted to make it the way I wanted it and so it'll look cool in my shop. So I decided to use walnut for the trim and the door handles and all the drawer pulls as well. There's a few assembly tables like this one, but I haven't seen any that incorporate this feature. So I'm basically just putting T-Track in the sides so that way I can clamp things in vertically. I attached the trim with brad nails and glue. I only added the track to one end and one edge because I didn't really need it going around the whole table. Once I got everything attached, I actually cut the corners off because I didn't want a sharp corner to bump into. And also this allows for the clamps for the T-Track to slide in very easily. 
The track saw didn't go all the way through, so I had to finish it off by hand. Then it was time to attach what I'm going to call the drawer faces of the pullouts and all the handles as well. I cut a little bevel on these handles just so I have a finger pull and it worked out pretty good. I like the clean look of them. It looks kind of modern and they were simple to make. To attach the handles I just figured out exactly where I wanted them, clamped them down and then I screwed them in from the back. You don't see it on video but I actually did pre-drill these so that way the walnut doesn't split. The finish I chose was boiled linseed oil. I've actually never used this before, but I really like the way it works. It's easy to apply. You just wipe it on, let it sit, and then wipe off the excess, and it leaves a nice finish, kind of a natural look and not real glossy. This came from a couple recommendations from people and seeing what other people use on their workbenches. However, with the top of mind being MDF, I don't know that I would choose this again because MDF soaks it up really bad, and that could be the same with any finish but I think maybe next time I will try to do poly. And actually I've heard you can put polyurethane over this, so I may actually do that in the near future. Once I got all that done, I could attach the T-Track to the trim, and I really like the contrast between the blue and the walnut. It looks really good. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below and let me know. I really like the way it turned out. It's gonna be much more efficient in my shop, having all these accessories to hold things down to the table and or up off the table. And another big shout out to Rockler, AccuRide, and Tools Today for sponsoring the tools and accessories for this video. I've noticed there's a couple other videos on YouTube of a table similar to this, one by Johnny Brook from The Crafted Workshop and one from Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture. I'll leave those links in the description below too if you guys wanna check out those videos. They're pretty good. Well, that pretty much wraps up this build. It was a fun project for sure. I'm really glad to have it in my shop. If you guys enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you over here that you'll probably enjoy as well. And if you did like it, please like, share, subscribe if you haven't already to the channel and leave me a comment in the comments below. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about the video or my other videos. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all you guys watching. We'll see you next time.